See if everybody's here. Good. Let us know when Art shows up. Yeah, really. Still can't see him. <laughs> Actually, uh, oh, somebody's giving him a run for their money. No, now. Art looks better now. Art yeah, no, better. Bob's Bob's pretty dark. Yeah. Looks like Art, Art might have lit a candle. Curtis Crabtree's bad. Curtis Crabtree looks like he's playing video games. <laughs> yeah. All right, John, you want to start us off? Yeah, it's real effective day. You know, we uh, starting with Daryl. I mean, we we uh, he was in consideration last night, and uh, we're, we're our guys did a great job of working their tails off to try to keep getting up to try to, to try to acquire them. And uh, it was pretty it was pretty hot. Uh, we view him as uh, uh, one of the very very top pass rushers in this league. Uh, you know, he played through a, a stress fracture. Last year in his leg and and uh, in his fibula and and uh, you know just sucked it up and then ended up having surgery at the end of the year and uh, doctors feel good about him and uh, we've seen him run around and and uh, uh, you, there's video of him working out and that sort of thing. We had him in for a visit. He had a great visit with the staff. It was he was actually the the last guy we had in uh, before you know the, the quarantine came into effect. So. Uh, just really excited, um, and I know the coaching staff's very excited about you know a guy that that you know can really put his hand in the ground and, and jump off the ball and and uh, you know play with really good leverage and effort and work his way back to the quarterback. Pete, you want to have any? Yeah, open? yeah just to add to it, uh, guy. Um, you you might have seen him already. But you guys met him already. He's very upbeat personality, uh, aggressive kid. Um, you really, like John said, had that one visit with us that was worked out great for us. We, you know, we got to get close, up close and personal, and all. Uh, he's done a lot of stuff on the edge, so he's a real edge player. Uh, he's done some dropping, but mostly he's been a rusher. Um, really was effective when when you look at him in his third down rushes when he was really determined. They did a lot of stuff with him defensively, so there was times when you you could see him. You know, he had to do a lot of a lot of responsibilities, which is really good. Uh, well versed. Um, Really wanted to get a pass rusher if we could. Uh, I, I thought two things I would mention that last night when uh, we had Brooks right where we Johnny had him nailed the whole time that this is where this guy may come to us. We were waiting on it and it worked out great. And then the next shot was to try to get Taylor. And so um, it just worked out excellent in excellent fashion for us. So really good picks and just will give us a big boost. John Boyle. Yeah, John, you talked heading into this process about trading maybe being one of the challenges. You guys traded twice today. Just how how'd that all play out for you? Like I said, our guys just did a great job. Uh, you have to give it, you know, our, our IT guys and, and, and Trent Kirshner, Matt Berry worked on a really cool program for us to be able to, you know, communicate virtually. Uh, we can, we can, you know, discuss, we can look at every, every, every team we're talking to and, you know, there's there's uh, scenarios up there, and it's 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 uh, they've just done a really good job with it, and and have really have had had great communication, and it's it's gone. It was it was it was it was very smooth. We could see it was coming. We tried to navigate to, you know, where we thought we needed to be um, to go up and get Daryl, and then uh, you know, uh, with Damian's, you know, it's not, you know, there's it's this isn't necessarily when you're in the draft. It's not necessarily when you, when you're in the draft weekend. It's not necessarily about the evaluations themselves. It's more about how you acquire the player and and uh, so you know for us to have a guy that's going to come in here and compete, you know, at, at at right guard, championship kid. I mean, we felt like that was a great place to take him and and. Uh, yeah, so it was it was uh, the, the 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 challenges. The guys did a great job today. I mean, we, I feel like we could go for a couple more days now. Obviously, the Vikings do too because they have thirteen picks left now. Are you jealous of that? Yes. <laughs> Bob Condota. You know, Bart Starr was a fifteenth round pick, so. Um, hey, John, I think you have 19 offensive linemen now with drafting Lewis. Just, I guess, if you did the overall plan on the offensive line and having that many guys and, how, and how, what sort of the approach was there? Just trying to get as much, comp you know, much competition as we possibly can to protect our quarterback. You know, we think we have the best quarterback in the National Football League. And, and, and 
we have to we have to figure out the best uh, the best group to protect him. Corbin Smith. Hey, this question's for Pete. Obviously, you had Ed Ordron on your staff at one point at USC, and he's done a phenomenal job getting that LSU program back to being a powerhouse. How much influence did his presence have on you guys going after Damian Lewis in the third round of this draft? Well, Eddie's had influence on the entire draft. <laughs> you started with the first pick and the whole thing, you know, and you have a bunch of guys that have been picked already and there'll be some more. Um, we have very, very clear communication with Eddie throughout. We, we stay in touch. Uh, matter of fact, he was the highlight of the post uh, draft pick of Damian Williams. He, everybody got to, to hear him as he was going on and on about him and how much he loves the kid and all that. Um, but yeah, well, I, we had great, our scouts had great information. It was really helpful that, you know, I felt really confident too and, and, and to see uh, all the connections and why we felt so strongly about Damian, you know, from the background checks and all of that. Um, so, it, you know, those kinds of relationships are important. And Eddie and I see things, you know, squared up. And, and uh, so when he's telling me I'm going to love this kid and I'm going to think the world of him by the way he competes and battles and all that, I know, he, I know he's right, you know, so that does help. Thank you. Tim Booth. Pete, is, is Daryl kind of the typical Leo that we've seen in the past, whether it was Frank or, or Clem? Yeah, he is, is exactly that. He's right in that mold. Um, he, he's, you know, the height, weight, speed thing is there. His aggressiveness is there, his flexibility, uh, his savvy for, for turning the corner and doing the things that that position calls for, the power he has to finish. He's got speed to power moves. Um, and there's, there's enough ability there for him to do some drop in the few times that we do that when we mix our, our looks and all. So we thought he was a, a, an absolute in the pocket guy for us. And, and uh, so that was easy an easy evaluation in that regard. So we're very happy to get him and we know he's going to have a chance to contribute early. How, how is he against the run or what have you seen from him against? It? Very aggressive. Um, he's made, he's been a good tackler um, really is, you know, is strong at the point of attack, holds the edge. It's what, what those guys are asked to do on plays at him is to hold the edge and, and, and really attack that, you know, the tackle with the tight end that they're playing on. They'll be featured edge players, you know, in, as the game continues to, to widen and spread, you know, in the, the perimeter uh, attack seems to continue to grow. Those guys are more factors. And so it was a really important pick for us to get. And, uh, you know, we'd love to have a rotation of those guys so uh, we can keep those guys fresh and, and, and uh, their motor burning. Uh, so, um, but everything about it fits just right. Thank you. Curtis. Hey, John, I, I was, uh, Damien said he has experienced at a couple different spots on the line center as well, but he's had some flexibility with that. Do you foresee that being something he could work into the future for you? Or is that that right guard kind of where you see uh, his best sort of fit coming in at this point? Well, it's easy for, easier for us to just, you know, uh, project that. We've seen him do it 22 straight starts and, you know, playing big time football and, uh, or big boy football as, uh, Aaron Heinlein, our area scout calls it. Uh, but he, he had fallen in love with him and, and Scott Fitter, the guys that went into the school, he's a self-made guy, man, you know, JC guy from, uh, from, uh, Mississippi. And, and, uh, he's just this, he's just a, I mean, he rode the bus us, you know, like from his apartment to school every day and stuff. And you just, I don't know. There's just so many cool things about the guy. And he's so stout. He's so heavy with his hands. He's got great anchor. He's got really good eyes. And you can see him play against uh, top level competition. So it makes the, the uh, evaluation that much easier, but you know, yes, he has taken some snaps at center. Uh, but obviously we see it's, it's easier for us to see him competing at right guard. He, uh, he called the Seahawks his favorite team and that he was playing Madden with a friend and said he was going to end up here. I mean, really? <laughs> yeah, that that uh, because of the way you guys run the football, that kind of appealed to him and, and all that. So, I, I mean, to get somebody that's that gung-ho about coming to join you too, that has to be a huge plus, I would assume. Yeah, all three of them were, you know, uh, when Daryl left the building that day, he's like, man, I really hope this works out. And and he had played, uh, played ball with Khalil McKenzie, who's, on our team, Reggie McKenzie's son. And, and, uh, so we had some really good inside scoop on him too. And, and quite frankly, I think with Daryl, it, it, it helped us that, 
you know, we were one of the few uh, teams that were able to have our, our, our uh, medical staff really, you know, get into it and put their hands on them and, and evaluate them further. AJ. So this is a question for coach Carroll um, coach with a kid like Daryl, what is the biggest, I know he's a prototypical style for you, but what is the biggest challenge and then transitioning him to being ready to play and contribute at the NFL level outside of just his frame and, and size. Well, he, you know, he's played against such good competition and he really has rushed against the best tackles and, and, and had that opportunity. That That's the biggest challenge is that, you know, the, the level of play is so much more consistent in, in the style of players and the, the size of the guys he'll play consistently, but he's gone up against the best. And so um, that adds to the ability to evaluate him clearly. So it's, it's going to be, uh, you know, his, his willingness to keep fighting the fight because it's hard. You know, you rush hundreds of times just to get those couple pressures as they come along and you just got to keep battling. So he looks like he has a good motor. His consistency is there and very competitive kid. So uh, if he'll just bring that fight in, in, uh, then he won't have any trouble learning what, what we're asking him. He he's already knows how to play the, the edge position. Um, he's been coached well. And so he just needs to learn his assignments and adapt and then be ready to adapt to the level of play um, and the consistency of how good that is. So yeah, he's going to be fine though. This, he's been set up really well uh, to, to do well here. Ben. Yeah. Hi, hi guys. Uh, Pete, John, this is kind of a question for both of you. Um, kind of through these first three picks, it's been kind of very, very apparent that, you know, each of the guys you've selected have um, gone through tremendous hardship in their life, have had to really deal with a lot and grow up really fast. You know, Jordan was homeless. Um, you know, Damien was, um, you know, his father was incarcerated. Daryl's father was incarcerated as well. I guess just how actively do you kind of seek out guys who've kind of been through a lot in their life and why is that such a big part of your mo kind of the seahawks mo and um you know a seahawks type of player well I, from, I think from day one you know we've always talked about you know trying to build a football team that could go play anybody anywhere if it was in a park or in a street or in a football stadium wherever and so you know we, when we when we look at these guys you know you know, to have that grit level in our minds, they have to be able to overcome some sort of obstacle. And, uh, you know, all three of these gentlemen have. I mean, Daryl Taylor was is a very talented, talented pass rusher. You'd very easily just shut it down and, and, and uh, uh, you know, with his, with his stress fracture. And he ended up, even with that, you know, fighting through it. But he wouldn't have been able to do that if he hadn't overcome so many things in his past before this past season. So uh he's just you know he's, he's he's grown a lot everybody talks about how he's matured as a man at the school and and uh you know jason barnes got to know him uh very well jason covers uh the midwest for us and uh yeah just stayed in touch with them and and uh like i said we just had a great visit with him but there's a whole bunch of people it's a it's a you know our we learn about grit more and more and more every year and we focus on it. And um, it's just a never ending study. It's a good question. Yeah. These guys, life experiences, they mold you one way or the other, you know, and, and the guys that have been able to have the support when they needed it or the, just to stick to it. this, you know, that they, when they were up against the big challenges, if they make it through it, it makes them stronger. And these guys have all been guys that they, they were probably pretty ready to tell you about their story and they, they let you know, you know, about their background and how uh, I think it's a clear statement of how the challenging, difficult times can really make you stronger and make you better. And these guys are examples of that. And, and if they learn the lessons, then they bring along that, that, that willfulness that can make them unique and special. And, and we really feel like these guys are all uh, ones that come in with a chip on their shoulder. They got something to prove. They're not going to be denied. They're not going to let anybody get, get in their way and take it away from them. Um, you know, really, I'm sure you heard that, uh, from, uh, Jordan last night and, and, uh, it's a, I think John has really made it important to the scouts to understand these guys and to know and, and, and understand the impact that their lives have had so that they can contribute to us. And, and, uh, I, we're thrilled about these guys and this is the kind of people that you want to build a team with. Thank you. Art.
John, uh, uh, how many guys did you have in for interviews before the curtain came down um, on the in-house interviews? And uh, what was particularly distinctive about uh, Taylor's uh, interview that was decisive in choosing him? It was, I, th I think we only had maybe two or three. We had a couple of veterans in for physicals that same day. So I'm trying to remember exactly how many guys, but uh, the fact that he could jump from room to room, he could go to Pete's office, to my office, to, you know, the, 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 uh, the equipment room, to, you know, the, the training room, spend time with our docs, spend time with the defensive staff, you know, the, the D-line coach, uh, Co coach hurt. I mean, everybody, everybody was just, he just handled himself very well. Um, and was excited to be there. You know, we ended up having lunch with him that day too, and a couple of us. <clears throat> and uh, he just did a great job. He was just, he was just a very impressive, impressive young man with an edge, <laughs> with an edge. And he's got a chip and he's mad that he didn't have a better season. And he, you know, he, this guy, who knows if he's healthy this year, like where we're, we're talking about drafting him. Without a, um, uh a combine test, uh, how difficult was it to assess his, um, his health? I mean, he was at the combine, but he didn't do anything else. Right. Right. I mean, we had two sets of, of physicals on, right. So he goes to the combine and then, and then also when we brought him in, but for us, it was like, it was really about getting to know the, the person a little bit better. And, you know, there's a whole, there's a whole slew of guys that, you know, we, we had scheduled to come in here on the 30 visits and, you know, we, we, so we didn't interview them at the combine. And so, uh, you know, luckily we were able to interview him and spend time with him and, and, and get him out to Seattle. Um, yeah. So then the rest of it was, was on, you know, zoom and Skype and, you know, everything else. We Virtual. were able to see his workout, um, here at the end of the time. So, which was reassuring, you know, he really looked good in his workout moving and jumping and cutting and all that kind of stuff. So that really did help us out and, you know, when he did miss the rest of the combine time and all that. Thanks. Mike, Sean Dugar. Hey guys. Uh, first one is, um, I picked today, man. That's cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. Dugar, not, I get it. Not Dugar, I get it. Yeah. I know, I know. I get it. Just best um, with you, dude. Uh, first thing, um, how would you guys, uh, how do you guys see Damien uh, as a pass protector uh, already? And how much were you sweating before making the decision to go up for Daryl? Well, we, we, yeah, I mean, from, from the get go this morning, we, you know, we were, we were on it trying to move and, and uh, the whole way, I mean, we were trying to go up pretty high <laughs> to get him. Like I said, we, we considered taking him last night. So uh, it's, it was, it was, it was on for a long time. And then finally we were able to get a deal done, uh, with the jets and, and, uh, Joe Douglas and, and, uh, we were able to get on the clock and, and take them. So it was very exciting. And then with Damien, the pass protection, sorry. Yeah. 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 Just how Damien as a pass protector. Yeah. Well, he, he, he please got good length for a guy that's not, you know, ideally as tall as, you know, some would like, but you know, I think it's, you know, personally, we, you know, I, I like it because it plays with great leverage and he's, he's a real stout dude. Nobody really walks him back. Uh, he's very aggressive and uh, he's, he's got, he's got great eyes and he's played again, he's played against the best players in the country. All right. Thanks guys. Thank you. Joe fan. Joe, uh, John, oh, Pete, why are you smiling? Uh, I know. Uh, is it funny? That's not very nice. No, I mean it's like it's Joe. I'm Joe fan. You know, I mean it's a great name. Uh, I Pete touched on it on a bit, um, but a lot of the talk on on Daryl is that he is raw. I read somewhere, you know, five star traits, three star skills at this point. I mean, do you view that the same at all? And if so, is it just you don't take that into consideration as much of a risk because you have faith in the coaching staff tapping into you know every bit of his potential? Yeah, I, I go, John. The, uh, you know, we really, we just, he played such a good schedule. He showed against the best. 
Uh, he's really physical. Like John said, his stature really helps him. They, they play with great leverage. He's really a powerful guy. You know, we have, we have no problem. You know, and he was consistent. Coaches loved him. Leader, tough, culture setter, kind of all of the positive things that you want. Um, our entire staff loved the guy because of his aggressiveness and toughness. He's going to really make it tough on guys. He's going to battle, and he'll compete right from day one uh, for his playtime, and that just makes us better. So, I don't, I don't think that there's any, you know, there's no any question in the process. Two full, full years of playing was plenty of time to see him. And, and then Pete, one quick follow up: Do you see Damian Lewis as a guy who can compete with uh, with Fluke right away? Yeah, he will. Uh, he he won't take a backseat to anybody. He's going to come in here and battle for it, and so. Um, we feel really good. That's that's really part of the reason we, we took him. We want him to come in here and battle to play. And uh, all of that competition will make us better. He's a grown man. I mean, that's, that's you know, we talked about it. Before. I think we talked about it a couple of days ago. You know, Russ, 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 grown man in front of him. And that's what this guy is. Brady. I, the uh, I'm not sure what the number is on Damian Lewis's uh, squat, but it looks like it was uh, something massive, 600 pounds or something. Uh, where, yeah, where does uh, where does that rank among one of the higher numbers that you've seen? That's a lot of weight. <laughs> That's a ton of weight. Like a lot. <laughs> no, I, I I have so many I have so many numbers running through my head. I I can't tell you, but it's a, it's a ton. John cross a lot too, you know, so, you know, and often, so he, he could tell you, but um, he's just a little, you know, a little worn down right now from the two hard days. John, what do you bench? What's your bench? <laughs> <laughs> Greg Bell. Well, that's about it for today. Huh, guys, thanks a lot. Huh? <laughs> I still love you too, Pete. Thank you. <laughs> On the uh, grit perseverance question that Ben asked, how much is that even more paramount for you guys this year with the shortened off season, no OTAs, mini camps, and like we talked about, you said it may be a truncated uh, training camp. Go ahead, John. Yeah, absolutely. It's 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 been a it's been a big issue for us. Uh, you know, a primary primary part of our scouting philosophy this year, anyway, and and now especially with acquisition, it's it's. Uh, it's all about the guys that can come in here and, and, and contribute right away. And, you know, so again, you know, having the pass rusher be able to come in, spend time with our docs again, extra time, and then uh, be around our coaches made us, <clears throat> made us feel all that much more uh, positive about his, his football knowledge and everything they asked him to do there. Um, he, he, he had to do a little bit normal, more than the normal uh, rusher and uh, uh, was very familiar with, um, you know, could explain the schemes and everything he was doing. And, and uh, so, <clears throat> yeah, we're excited to get him in here and, and get him going. And, 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 you know, all, all the guys that are, it's been a focus for us no matter what. Yeah. We want to have guys that we know can come in and, and uh, uh, you know, don't necessarily need a ton of uh, hand holding. Pete, hey, you're I you what Paul has to say. I'm sorry. I was just kind of, Curious what Paul gets to see. I haven't even asked the question yet. <laughs> but the one follow -up, Paul. Sorry, Pete. The one follow-up to that is in your in your experience, a normal player coming out of college, how much time is it till he becomes a man responsible enough with the day-to-day -day that you don't really have to hold his hand like John did? Greg, it really depends on the guy. You know, the, the, it, it's, it's such an individual thing. It depends on the de development, depends on what he was like when he went into school, you know, and all that. And, what was the process like? What did he overcome? I mean, it just depends, you know, that there's not a really set time, you know, I don't think the guys really start turning the corner to about 24, 25 years old, you know, truly. And, and uh, but there's always guys that are ahead of the curve on that. But, um, so it just depends. And that's why that all of the work that John does, all those guys is so crucial. Our coaches try to top it off at the end of the process, but you know, our guys go all the way back to seeing these guys in, as underclassmen and they see them coming out of their, their junior years or the, the year before and to try to understand, you know, how far they have come. Um, some programs are, you know, different than others and they, they demand their guys to come farther sooner and um, which are, you know, we understand. And so it's, there's just no set way, no set time, I think.
Paul? Uh, to piggyback yes. off of... <laughs> How you guys doing? Uh, to piggyback off of what Greg was asking and specifically looking at Damian Lewis, I mean, he's going to be competing against 18 veteran offensive linemen and competition is going to, I imagine, you know, figure out who the best player is. But, uh, you know, with limited in offseason for an offensive lineman, I would imagine that's perhaps more difficult than it is for uh, other positions in terms of getting up to speed. What's going to be the biggest key for him this offseason so that he comes into this competition on the same playing field as these veteran players? It's going to be, you know, it's definitely, it's a challenge anyway. It's a challenge to make the transition. Fortunately, they had, a, uh, at LSU, they had a very high-tech program. They were very much the cutting edge, pass protection-wise, and in the, in the concepts that they coached and demanded of the players to learn. Uh, his coaches, Eddie in particular, raved about his, his work ethic, uh, his study ethic, um, and, and it's just his overall smarts and understanding of the game. Um, so uh, all of that's going to come into play. Our, what we're asking our players to learn as far as our installations in this new mode that we're in, um, we've, we're you know, tailoring that as well. Um, and, and really with the long, with the flexible way of looking at the long haul, we don't know what, what, you know, what it's going to be. So um, we'll find out you know, how, how much they can pick up. Obviously, the veterans that come in have an edge. They've got to cash in on that edge, you know, so that they can maintain their, their competitive opportunity and all that. That's always the case, you know. And so when the young guys come in, and we 18 guys come in right now looking at, at, at what these guys are up against, this is going to bring out the very best in them. We want to play great football up front. We want to, you know, give Russ the chance to really tear it up like he can. And, and so everybody's going to be battling to get that done. Uh, it's, going to, it's going to take a lot of uh, unique adaptive coordination to take advantage of the times that we have, the format that we have. You know, we're going to have a, a Ricky mini camp, and it's going to be a virtual one, you know. And so, you know, we're, we have all of our ways, creative ways to try to make that really advantageous for the guys. But it's it, we're all battling. It's a competition, you know, for the players, it's a competition for the coaches, and, and to get this done as we race to, you know, game one. Mike, Sean, you had a follow-up? Uh, yeah, John, I just wanted to know how much fun you would have with 13 day three picks like Minnesota has. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> That'd be a total blast, man. Yeah. You know, I, I was thinking, I was just thinking the, the process of it. You know, rookie free agency is going to be so crazy this year. It's, it's you know, it might be a great philosophy for them to just, you know, pick as many guys as they possibly can. And so they're not, you know, uh, out there recruiting. And, um, and that's, you know, the way they're going to spend their rookie pool, rookie free agency pool. Bob Condota. Uh, for John, hey, just was it important as well after you traded up? To okay, trade yeah, you know, okay. You'll say something after anyway, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, Peter, John, go first. I don't no, I'm sorry. I tried to ask for you. I was just curious. Was, was it important to uh, get another pick after you had traded up? I mean, you're were, you were only going to have six. I'd end up with the four going into tomorrow and all that. Or no, it's it was really more about again. It's it's more about you know how how you acquire the players that you've you've identified. And uh, I mean, Pete and I are talking the whole time. You know, we have people on on Skype or on uh, Zoom. There's a whole bunch of guys on there that are working on trades and a couple other people that are um, hanging out watching. And then Pete and I are able to go back and forth together. And then, and that's, you know, ba it's basically like, Hey, you know, are, are you comfortable with this player? I mean, we've, we've, we've talked about this stuff for a number of weeks now. And so he's, you know, we, we, we just, it's kind of a, we just kind of reiterate like, okay, here we are. We're going to try to move here and acquire this player in, in that avenue. And, and I think, again, I think our guys do a great job of, of uh, maneuver, helping us maneuver around and, and kind of help Pete and I wrap our minds around where we're going to go. Yeah. I think you would be surprised at how many scenarios our guys presented to us uh, during the course of just these, these fir first rounds. Uh, every, every step of the way, almost every pick, it seems like something's coming up one way or the other. Um, they were very, very active, and they were very smooth. It was – we really had no problem at all navigating. And, and uh, John was totally in command and uh, running the ship. It worked out great. Okay, last question, Masvida. Yes, sir. Uh, this is, I guess, for Pete or John. Is, is part of the 
the reason why guys come in with having overcome adversity yet wanting to learn because of the, the, the gift that you guys are there for them, not only as athletes, but you've done the research for them as human beings. So they're coming in wanting to learn and having overcome the life, uh, the life situations. I would, I would hope, you know, we do have pretty general response about from players on the outside looking in at us that, that they, they are curious, you know, they do want to see what we're all about. They've heard this or that about it. Um, and, and hopefully when they come to meet our, our folks and they, they get a sense for the environment and the energy that they, like, like we, we talked about, uh, you know, with, with uh, D Taylor, you know, he came in there and he, he really could feel it. And he was, you know, he felt the, the, everybody's willingness to accept him, you know, immediately. And, and that, that's part of the culture. And, and I, I think um, it's all part of trying to nurture a great, environment so they can excel and do really well at it and part of that is helping them feel comfortable and where they they can adapt quickly and they're not waiting and wondering what's going on you know we try to embrace these guys right from the moment they get here and open up to them so that they can be receptive to you know and so that we can really take them you know to the the, the furthest reaches and so um i think it's all connected and and it the, the challenges that they faced and in, in, in are, are one thing you know that's that's their tremendous individual accomplishment and then it's, it's on us us to figure out how we can communicate with them based on where they're coming from and what they're looking for you know what's important to them and all of that that's all part of our discovery process so that we can reach these guys and do, do some really cool things with them so um but you know i, I think it's all part of the environment and then i hopefully we'll continue to make it a good one so these guys can flourish thank you all right, guys, I think that's it. Thank you, everyone. See you. Bright and early tomorrow. Let's go. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.